Ah, yes. Yes, again, boys and girls. We are in the old hunk of junk, playing some copyright-free music to bring you another episode of the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number 324, Sports Ball Jubilee of Jammed Juice Brainlets and Execs. Springtime approacheth. That is indeed what is happening, boys and girls. Springtime approacheth, but it is cold as shit this Saturday morning here in Las Vegas. But as a maybe a little bit of a cold, constipated Las Vegan, Las Las Vegas site, Las Vegite. I don't know what the fuck you call residents of Las Vegas. I don't know what fucking shit you got to use there, but. But I am very excited for baseball coming back. Minor League Baseball will be back too, boys and girls. Las Vegas Aviators getting their shit in. And I know baseball for Minor League had to announce a little bit of shifting and changes for divisions and teams and whatnot. And I actually have to look into that. But the most important thing to me is, hey, if I can watch the Las Vegas Aviators, great. If I can watch the... um, Oklahoma City Dodgers, great. Are they called Oklahoma City Dodgers? OKC Dodgers, is that right? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty thrilled to have baseball back very soon. I mean, we're wearing the LA hat as per usual in these cruise peruses. Mixed with some untitled rat there, but we got more Dodgers news, boys and girls. Man, oh man, Andrew Fleisman is at it again, boys and girls. And I gotta roll the windows up here. Puppies, too bright. I can't see shit. And the LA spotlight has never been brighter for a man like Trevor Bauer, who, hey, listen, you come to LA, you wanna win, and I genuinely believe, I mean, you add Trevor Bauer to that starting rotation, we are going to have a very dangerous squad. But, you know, we got to trim the fat from this Dodgers team. And Andrew Fleisman doing it again. Now, shout out to my man Jake McGee. He had a couple of decent moments there in the postseason. But he will be signing a two-year, $7 million contract with the San Francisco Giants. I hold no ill will, you know, towards Jake McGee. I'm not really crazy about the Giants, obviously, but get that bag, get your money, and go at it. And another pitcher that had to be paid and thankfully avoided arbitration and actually got paid was Walker Bueller. Two years, $8 million deal, and you know by the end of that deal, if if Walker keeps going the way he's going and really solidifies himself as the Dodgers ace, you know that boy is going to get paid. And, man, oh, man, I hope he does, and I hope it's with the Dodgers, and I hope he helps us win another one. And by another one, I mean World Series, boys and girls. But, hey, we have some former World Series champions leaving the L.A. Dodgers. Now, this is all via trade. So, you have, let me read here, Adam Kolarik heading to the Oakland A's along with outfielder Cody Thomas. And we are bringing in... Let's actually read here, boys and girls, because my handwriting is dog shit. Sheldon Noose, Noosey, Noose, and Gus Varland, Verland. My handwriting is dog shit this morning, boys and girls. But, hey, we're relieving some more room in the you know, budget and you know, salary. And shout out to Adam Kolarik. Also, Dylan Floro heading over to the Miami Marlins via trade for bop, 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 bop. Uh, left-hand reliever Alex Vesia and another prospect that hasn't been named as of yet. But you know what the Dodgers are trying to do right now, boys and girls. They're trying to shed payroll. They're trying to add more depth and, you know, firepower to this already powerful team in the Dodgers. And you know my number one priority, boys and girls, is signing JT. If you're the Dodgers, you know goddamn well what Justin, T- uh, Justin Turner can do for you. Not Justin Timberlake. That's not the real JT. The real JT is Justin Turner. The OG. The real fucking high chancellor of the Dodgers. I mean, this guy is basically just been the face. I mean, obviously you got Clayton Kershaw, but in terms of leadership, in terms of um, 
you know, being such a vocal part of the community in Los Angeles. I mean, JT is the man. And man, I hope I hope he gets that bag wherever he goes. But I, I hope it's with the Dodgers. And I hope the Dodgers don't have to overpay a ridiculous amount. And I, I'm hoping that what Andrew Fleisman is doing right now with these payroll sheds, with these trades, with these free agencies going. Hoping it's a good sign to get JT in. And you know, it's just curious when you're watching the presser uh, for Trevor Bauer for the first time as a Dodgers. You know, the guy comes in second. You know, he's been there so many times, just didn't have the extra push. So now you're coming into the fold in La La Land, and I'm hoping that this move is really the domino effect of you know creating another fucking dynamic Dodgers team. I mean, bro, we already got Mookie. We already got Cody. We already got Corey. We already got Kirsch. We already got Walker. We already got Julio Urias. And we're having a great time right now. Also, Bruce Dark Grad are all shout out to the Red Sox. Shout out to the fucking Red Sox, man. I will always appreciate the Boston Red Sox. And I know it's a very condescending, fucked up way to do it. But listen, man. If you're a Red Sox fan, just embrace the fact that you won the shit ton of World Series in two decades. Like, be, be excited about that. You had Big Poppy. Dude, shouldn't that be enough? And now your avaricious ownership is selling everything off. Andrew Benatendi is heading over to the Kansas City Royals, and this was a three-team deal along with the New York Mets. A lot of prospects that weren't named, but if you're a Red Sox fan, again, Listen, man, your era of dominance in the sports ball realm is over. You think the Celtics are going to really do anything? I oh, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think Steve, uh, Steve Ainge is an overrated general manager. I think, if anything, the Bruins is your best bet into getting anything done. I mean, they're looking great again. But the Patriots, I mean, you're, you're going through probably a two-season rebuild with uh, Bill Belichick if he's allowed to stay at the helm for that long. And yeah, yeah, the Red Sox, you won all those World Series, embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. You beat the fucking Dodgers. I have real no, uh, I don't know, sympathy, I suppose, for the Red Sox. And you won. Dude, you won. Now you're stuck with Chris Sale. <laughs> hey, shout out to my guy Doogie, though. Shout out to my guy Doogie. Shout out to my boy Kike. As, as much as I'm making fun of the Red Sox, man, I hope nothing but the best for those lads. I mean, not Chris Sale, just uh, Alex Verdugo and Kike Hernandez. I love those two guys. I mean, especially Kike. I, so it kind of breaks my heart that Kike is going, you know? But what can you do? You, know, you got to just roll with it, baby. You just got to roll with it. This is what baseball is all about. And we keep on rolling, and sooner or later, it's going to be spring training. I'm fucking excited, man. Baseball's coming back. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of uh, issues with uh, showing games uh, to full crowds. I know they're going to have a lot of capacity shit, which is dumb, honestly. I've said that for quite some time. But, yeah, uh, this is the pandemic that these elitists have been you know, pushing out for so long. I mean, this has been in the works for 20 years so sports is obviously facing the collateral damage from elitist uh i suppose rather malevolent activities here but as long as our you know sports ball keeps on getting delivered i suppose not a lot of people are going to be all antsy about it so hey give the peasants sports and they'll love it I love sports too, but the illusions of this world is real, baby. It is real. And many of the illusions, I mean, that I allude to is this whole COVID protocol shit for sports ball. It's absolute fucking nonsense. I mean, you fucking put that shit out for what? I would assume probably gambling purposes is what COVID protocols are actually for. Uh, maybe a little bit of a stranglehold from leaks to ownerships. You know, if the ownership group of a certain team 
isn't going along with something, you know, behind the scenes, maybe in a ownership meeting, executive board meeting, then you randomly post up a goddamn COVID protocol shit. I mean, I've seen that with Justin Turner, which was absolutely bullshit. I mean, he spent eight fucking innings in uh, game six of the World Series on the fucking bench around everyone, and all of a sudden, randomly, he's COVID positive, so he has to fucking leave the game. Shut the fuck up. It's some fucking bullshit. Everyone knows it. And the motherfuckers that aren't thinking that COVID is some fucking pandemic bullshit that elitists are pushing, dude, have fun. Have fun being plugged in, going fucking... Uh, you know, people to people talking about, oh, we got to social distance. Oh, we got to make sure we close the goddamn economy, not do shit like fucking slaves. Go fucking kill yourselves. Okay. And I like to call out fucking shit in sports ball because you know that it affects teams. And I'm not trying to make excuses here, but goddamn it, man. As a Golden Knights fan, I was kind of pissed. Oh, you can't put out Shea Theodore. Oh, you can't put out Tomas Nosek. Now, the Robin Lehner situation, upper body injury day to day, you know, that's, that's just kind of what it is. But with COVID protocol shit, I call bullshit on the NHL, NFL, NBA, any goddamn league that tries to over push that shit. It's absolutely fucking stupid. But gets, the reality is, I mean, we still got sports ball. So I'm not, I'm not overly antsy. But again, I'm not going to fucking be a goddamn cunguzzing moron and say, oh, COVID protocols are safe. This is what we have to do. No, we actually don't have to do any of this shit. But leagues are getting coerced into doing this and you're going to see multiple teams hemorrhaging money i mean multiple leagues losing billions of dollars in revenues and this is going to be on par for the course and it's kind of a way to consistently cuck sports and you see it none more so than in the nba and what you're seeing in tennis because the nba man i mean i've said so many times i mean this is the woke league of chinese basketball you might as well call it the woke league of just leftist basketball bullshit because at this point when you have mark cuban talking about oh we're not gonna play the national anthem bitch you're do you really want to lose half your fucking fan base i mean you already did you already did but you want to lose more of that half that's already gone you dumb fuck like mark cuban has to be the most retarded fucking sports owner in NBA, I in, probably in sports, one of the most retarded ones. You lucked into Dirk Nowitzki, but you spent fucking decades and years being a penny pinching fucking moron and fucking his career over. And I feel like you're gonna do the same thing with Luka Doncic. I hope you get fucked, Mark Cuban. I like Luka. I like the Mavs as a fucking basketball team on the fucking court. But when you look at the behind the scenes shit with Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban is such a dumb, cucked out moron. And man, oh man, this woke league of Chinese basketball, it's just filled with pussies. It's just filled to the bim with fucking pussies, bro. You got Carl Anthony Towns, supposedly the best center in the league, talking about COVID scares me. Oh, yeah, dude, you lost your mom to COVID, but guess what, bitch? I bet you 100% that the whole reason it wasn't. Let me fucking rephrase this before I fucking stumble all my goddamn words here. The whole reason why your mother passed away, cat, is probably beyond the reasons of just COVID. Your mother was probably unhealthy as shit. Or, more sinister take, maybe the doctors, understandingly, uh, knowing that you're an NBA player, probably poisoned your mom. Okay? Don't, don't leave that out of the realm of possibility. Okay? Doctors are goddamn medicine men that try to get you hooked on these goddamn pills in order to what? To keep you coming. So they'll intentionally get you sick to fuck you. Why do you think hospitals make so much fucking bank, yet nobody talks about the fact that medical malpractice causes about, on average, on average, an annual 200 death count? 200,000 death count. 200,000 fucking plus death count on an annual basis. Medical malpractice deaths. But, 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 no, 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 man. No, man. Don't fucking trip, dude. Medical shit's all, all the goddamn shit, right? I mean, medical police state is what we want to do. You're fucking brain dead morons. And pussies like cat doesn't ever help the matter because this fucking pussy, this 20 something year old pussy is perpetuating this notion that, oh, the magical omnipotent virus is something to fear and be scared of and not do anything. Fuck you, you fucking pussy. Stop playing basketball then, you big bitch. 
Carl Anthony Towns, beyond the whole fucking scope of this COVID scare that you're just oozing out like a big fat fucking pussy. Dude, you are one of the most overrated centers in the league. I would contest that, man, Carl Anthony Towns might be the lamest number one pick you've had in a long time. And if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, <laughs> how more fucked can your franchise get? You haven't made a conference final appearance since KG, and you wasted his career. You wasted Kevin Love's career. You're basically wasting Carl Anthony Towns' career. You've done nothing to help him out in terms of strengthening his mentality for the game. You've made him a fucking soft pussy. The death of his mother doesn't help either. And Carl Anthony Towns is probably such a fucking basic ass normie millennial that he won't ever question the death of his mother, why it happened, never researching the medical uh, details of what's going on in this whole fucking pandemic shenanigan. But that's the NBA for you, man. Woke League of Chinese Basketball. And it's just some nauseating uh, shit that always fucking percolates up from the NBA. It's a fucking joke. Of course, Mark Cuban's whole fucking thing of not playing the play, uh, national anthem. Yeah, the NBA fucking backslapped him. Like, get the fuck out of here. Play that shit. Like, do you understand we're hemorrhaging viewership already? Like, we're going to lose a shit ton of money from domestic uh, areas. Uh, probably not from China. Because, uh, goddamn, you got so much fucking money invested into that shit from the CCP. But who gives a rat's ass, boys and girls? I, mean, I cut cable. I'm honestly not watching baseball game, uh, basketball games at this point because it's just fucking perpetual nonsense, especially Black History Month, man. Might as well just call it Black Supremacy Month because all you're doing is you're saying black is great, everyone else is less. That's racist. That is the very definition of racism, you dumb fuck. But no, 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 no. It's all about black excellence and all oh, this is this isn't racist. Black people can't be racist. What are you fucking retarded? This is exactly why nobody wants to watch your fucking league, you dipshit. Jesus fucking Christ. What a joke. And tennis is kind of going the same route. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, we're going to not have fans for a couple of days here because there was an outbreak. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit. You probably couldn't control the goddamn venue because of all these weird fucking rules. So now you got to just have no fans at all. You cucked out country in fucking Australia. Can't believe you're a fucking continent. <laughs> the salt is real today, man. Because when I see stupid shit, when I see moronic, just insanely idiotic shit, I get upset. I get pissed off. I want to call it out. And I do call it out. You got a fucking problem with it. Oh, boo, fucking hell. Okay. Like, affirmative action in the Premier League is one of the dumbest fucking policies I've ever heard in my life. And, yeah, they want to go ahead and roll out with that. And I say, generally speaking, affirmative action is nonsensical. Um, you're only... You're only pushing this narrative of mer uh, diversity over meritocracy, which should never be the case in terms of any performance-based jobs. And, again, if you're incentivizing teams to hire just for the sake of diversity and not for meritocracy, you're only slowly strangleholding your organization and it's really dumb. Now I understand that there are certain owners in sports ball that are racist. That's just part of it, man. But what, what, what do you want? Like you're gonna force these owners to, what, have, fucking forced diversity hire just to create spite? I mean, you understand that uh, forced fucking affirmative action shit like that? You're only gonna further push shitty managers into positions of power? And not only that, man, I mean, in terms of football, man, especially in the, the top tier leagues in Europe, you're in charge of uh, anywhere from a billion to two billion dollar goddamn value franchises. You really think diversity over meritocracy is a smart move here? You're fucking dumb. All of you. All of these sports fucking leagues that are pushing diversity over meritocracy. Honestly, you shouldn't be viewed 
You shouldn't be patted on the back for this shit. And the people who are patting you on the back, they don't even watch the sport anyways. They've never watched it. You're pandering to a fucking a group of people on social media that are perpetually angry and always driving up this fucking fake enemy and building a wall and always moving goalposts for goddamn leftist sympathies that you're killing your own product. It's fucking suicide what sports balls are doing right now, man. And here's the thing with leftist morons. Here's a fucking thing with leftist sympathy and just fake altruism and moral ground standing. The goalpost will always be moved, okay? These fucking psychopaths will never be satisfied with one thing. Oh, you can't say that. Oh, you can't behave like that. You can't do that. This goes against this. This goes against that. This is hate speech. Blah, blah, blah. It's the weakest fucking shit ever. Because you can't tolerate something that doesn't agree with you, that you want to censor and fucking cancel it. Kill yourself. Fucking kill yourself. Now. Fuckers. It pisses me the fuck off, man. It really pisses me the fuck off. Like this douchebag in the Lexus who doesn't know how to fucking use a goddamn turn signal. You fucking piece of shit. Why don't you fucking go then, you fucking piece of shit? Huh? Huh? You're so fucking brave and smart, huh? You fucking piece of shit. Why don't you fucking go? Huh? Goddamn cocksucker. Hurry the fuck up, dude. Die in a fucking fiery car crash, you goddamn piece of shit. Fucking hey, man. Shit like that. Just gets me bothered. Morons driving like fucking morons. But they're, they're morons, so they should be driving. No, shut up. Shut the fuck up. You got a driver's license. You should damn well know how to operate your vehicle on the goddamn road. Okay? Just like how, hey, if you're a fucking football team, you should be able to win and close out games. And goddamn it, man, that's what Manchester City has been doing. I like that transition, don't you bitch? Ooh! But Pep Guardiola certainly likes the transition of what Manchester City has been doing from a me very mediocre uh, December and uh, n November and turning that into just dominant 15 straight wins in all competition. And man, it's it's quite the feat. It's quite the feat. I mean, 15 straight fucking wins. City is, I mean, sitting comfortably uh, on top of the Premier League right now. And you know what, man? I I said earlier in the year that Manchester United would win the league. But, oh, City is making it tough uh, to really smear my prediction there. But yeah, as an Arsenal fan, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> I don't really give a fuck who wins. If it's not Arsenal, who gives a shit, right? As long as Tottenham doesn't win the league, I'm fine. Okay. That's that's all that shit comes down to. I mean, that, that's Arsenal's spite and salt right there, baby. That is fresh, organic. And this cut of Arsenal toxicity always has something to say about Arsenal. I always do. I always do. Now, our current run in the Premier League has been... Notably dog shit. It really has been. But, hey, you know what? It is February. After this weekend, uh, Thursday, yeah, this upcoming Thursday, we are going to have the first leg, round 32, in the Europa League <sighs> against Benfica. This is going to be huge, boys and girls, because namely... Not only the fact that you're facing Benfica, a really good European club in Portugal, but you're also facing this notion that you're not going to be playing any home games, technically. Um, as far as I know, the teams are going to be facing um, each other in two neutral locations. I could be wrong on this because, I mean, I wrote this note down a couple days back, but I might have to look it up after this. But first leg is supposedly going to be played in Rome. And the second leg will uh, be played in Greece, but right, who the fuck knows how that'll go, right? Who the fuck knows how that'll go yet? I'm very excited to see the boys in Europe again, and who 
the hell knows, man. Maybe the boys can flip the switch I mean, because the run in the Premier League has been very mediocre as of late for Arteta's boys. And you know what? Well, I say flip. I'm going to go ahead and flip the windows down here. So the puppies can get some goddamn fresh air despite the sun glaring in our face. Goddamn, man. The sun so bright. Get the weather so cold. Kind of like the German machines known as Bayern Munich. Such bright faces and countenance, yet such cold, calculating ways of destroying their opponent. And of course, boys and girls, Bayern Munich wins the Club World Cup. And it's crazy because of the European dominance that's been shown in this competition, the Club World Cup. And I gotta tell you, man, uh, I was curious about when the last non-European team was, uh, who, who it was uh, for, for the Club World Cup, something on my fucking words here, but it was actually in 2012, Corinthians, when they beat Chelsea 1-0 in the Club World Cup final, <laughs> and I know Chelsea fans are going to fucking love me, Arsenal's never been in the Champions League, shut the fuck up, dude, you're goddamn European Giants, and you lost to a Brazilian team. And I'm pretty sure Corinthians in 2012 was probably bonkers in terms of talent, but get the fuck out of here, man. European clubs should be winning those Club World Cups all the goddamn time. Just more of a note when they don't win it. But Bayern Munich lifting that Club World Cup. A cup that, you know, very few exclusive clubs can lift up. Although, we all recognize that the Club World Cup is a very new competition compared to a lot of the older cup uh, cup ties and cup competitions that exist. Much like the FA Cup, where yes, Arsenal's out. I understand that. Arsenal's out. But I still want to catch up with what's going on in the FA Cup. I mean, more, more so than the League Cup, which I forget who the goddamn finalists are. I do. But oh, I think it might be City and Tottenham. I could be forgetting, but... Anyhow, boys and girls, the FA Cup is set for the quarterfinals, and we have a pretty good matchup set uh, for the four matches in the quarterfinals. So you got Everton versus Manchester City, you got Bournemouth versus Southampton, Leicester City versus Manchester United, and Chelsea versus Sheffield United. Lots of good fixtures there, uh, namely Leicester City versus Manchester United. I mean, I still hold to the notion, I mean, albeit, yes, Manchester City has been absolutely on fire with those 15 straight wins, I mean, I still would contest that Leicester City and Manchester United were the more consistent top two clubs in the Premier League as of, you know, now, up to now, from September, so very curious to see how they'll clash. Everton is, I believe, going to be the dark horse in this FA Cup uh dance, so to speak, and I'm very curious as to how, you know, the battle for Bournemouth and Southampton is going to go, I mean, not a lot of people are going to pay attention to that one, but Southampton, you know, they've had a very, 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 very poor form um, as of the last two, three months, really, so maybe the FA Cup is the best way for them to, you know, bolster their self-confidence and get the guys kind of going, I mean, because in the Premier League, they've just been absolutely ass, so... Curious, man. Curious how all that shit will go. And I hope fucking Chelsea loses to Sheffield United. <laughs> the salt. Yes, baby. It is all about the salt. And as salty as one can be. Man, oh man. When it comes to hockey, I try to try to lessen the salt nowadays more so than when I first started watching hockey. Other than maybe the San Jose Sharks, I don't really have a lot of hatred, I suppose, uh, or toxicity, or what's another word we can use? Or uh, sort of brash. Uh, brash irritants, I suppose, uh, uh, team. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really have a fucking team that I could just say, ah, fuck you. Not really. But, again, it always comes down to if the team is poorly run and 
from ownership to GM to, you know, whatever fucking other management personnel, if you keep fucking up, I'll question it and I'll, I'll get irritated if it's a consistent thing. And I'm not at the point of irritance yet, but with the Columbus Blue Jackets, you really have to start questioning what the hell's going on down there. Now, Miko Koivu, who has been in the NHL for 16 seasons, has rather suddenly and abruptly decided to retire. And it raised a lot of eyebrows as to what the hell is actually going on in the Columbus Blue Jackets. And obviously, Patrick Laine, you know, getting snubbed in terms of minutes on the shift, it, it begs a lot of question as to what Torts is doing. Now, I am of the belief, I am always of, I've always hold, held this stance with John Tortorella that I think he is a wonderful coach. I think he might be a bit of a stubborn prick, but he gets shit done. And he does more with less. But the situation right now is, I mean, when you have so much more of these assets and talents, I mean, what can you really do? And right now, Torts is just just exhibiting too much ego, man. I, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe it is that. I don't know. But, oh, Columbus is just looking really ragged right now. And I, I, you got to feel for their fan base, man. Because it's not looking all that hot. But certainly another team that hasn't been looking hot. And they're looking to, you know, rectify their situation and correct the course. It's the Pittsburgh Penguins. And, you know, they made a new hire in the GM and president of uh, hockey operations. Uh, candidacy presidency. I don't know why this bitch was waving at my dog's <laughs> Oh, Ron Hextel, former GM of the Philadelphia Flyers and, of course, Philadelphia Flyers legend, will join the Pittsburgh Penguins as the GM, and Brian Burke will be joining as the president of hockey operations. So the curious part is uh, Brian Burke, when he was uh, GM or president of hockey ops, in Vancouver, I, I know like Vancouver was the most notorious one. Didn't he basically destroy that team? Eh. So I, I don't know what the deal is there, but hey, Ron, uh, you know, with Ron Hextall, I think the Pittsburgh Penguins are getting a pretty damn good GM uh, because you have to know that this guy basically built the Philadelphia Flyers, and he was canned kind of unceremoniously by the organization, and while you know. You got Carter Hart, you got Giroux, you got a Vorchek, all these, all these cats doing the work. It just feels like a very cold organization to throw Ron Hextall out the door like that. But now Pittsburgh reaping the benefits, sowing the seeds of goddamn tyranny and treachery. Fucking banking, man. And I don't know how this is all gonna end out for the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers, but. Pittsburgh desperately needs something. They have been looking like shit. And, man, boys and girls, on this Saturday, we're going to find out what happens in all the sports ball world, whether the juice dum dum brains of the fucking execs are going to fuck teams over. Like with the Pittsburgh Penguins or goddamn Red Sox or goddamn Arsenal or motherfucking Seattle Seahawks. But... That's all to be found out today in the discovery of life, boys and girls. I'm going to go ahead and leave you there and close the goddamn windows for my puppies. But that'll do it for me, boys and girls. And tomorrow, I got to give you some fucking pep talk because you goddamn cucked out simps don't know how to fucking be lonely on a fucking made up holiday that's pushed by Hallmark to turn you into goddamn brainless consumers, you stupid fucks. So until next time, fuck off.